hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, and I'm beginning the 40 days prayer and fasting series here on YouTube. This is one that I did recently at my church. They put out this booklet for everyone, had some prayer guidance up in the front area, and then it had something for us to be praying for each day. They picked topics that kind of meandered through all the kinds of things our church is interested in and had some scriptures for some of them. Some of them were just prayer prompts. And then there was a selection of things to pray for. And what I would do is pray every morning. And then in the evening, I did a sketch based on what God had told me to. And here, the sketch that I, I did was based on Revelation 5. And I'll show you the sketch and a little bit of the sketchbook as well. But if you want this PDF, just so your church can have an idea of what kind of format you could use, I'm going to link the PDF in the description down below because doing this as a church body was really edifying to everybody. So it would be worth your while to do. So here is the little sketchbook and I did a toned sketchbook with black pencil, just a regular old black pencil and white chalk pencil. And I did this beautiful, magnificent sky because the scripture is all about the glory of God. And uh, I wanted those God rays that, that come out from that spot in the sun. I had found a picture just randomly on the internet of some clouds and then I adapted my own. I, the first thing had just gotten me excited. But here's a few of the other ones. I'll just flip through so you can see a couple of them. But as the year goes on in 2018, I'm going to choose some of these and I'm going to simplify them in case you decide you might want to do something similar. So I'll do some similar versions of them. And there might be some where I do the exotic drawing that's in here, but then I also show you some ways to simplify. But the verse for today is, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. So I am starting by putting a sheet of just regular old copier paper underneath so that I can do my watercolor here. And I have the big burst. And there's clouds that are covering up that burst. So that's the main idea. I'm not going to follow the sketch specifically, but I am going to create some clouds on here. It does not matter what watercolors you use. They should all work about the same. I think the Peerless bleed through and there's one Crayola brand that bleeds through, but other watercolors seem to do just fine. Test them out and see. I just put a splooge of color on there, as you can see. Didn't get really fancy with it and took a baby wipe and moved it around to lighten the color and to just make the edges nice and soft, that sort of thing. I'm going to put some more layers on here. But I'm just kind of setting a place where I'm going to have a spot for that burst of color coming from that, that central point so it can burst out into the rest of the page. And I'm moving my watercolor also so it's going to be light colored and I can read the text through it. I want to make sure I don't get it really thick and that sort of thing. So you don't want to use acrylic, you want to use watercolor. So I can add on some more shapes, that sort of thing, just some poofy clouds up there in the sky. And one of the cool things about this technique is it allows you to layer color and it allows colors to have this really interesting texture to them. So as I add more color and make my clouds, now that I kind of know where they're gonna be, I can add little heavier layers of color, but in from the edges a little bit so that I get a little bit of a haze of light color around the outside edge and then a little heavier on the inside. And if you use multiple colors, if you throw in some purples or pinks or something, you can get some really beautiful mixes of color in the clouds. And if you wanna just go to Google and find out how the light hits clouds and things, you can use that as an example, that sort of thing, to get some color ideas. So now I have the yellow peeking through, and this is where the sun is behind all of this somewhere. It's not gonna show directly necessarily through this yellow. You could put the yellow down first, but what I find is that the yellow will make green really fast. And if I can control it and just put it in a few spots like this, then it doesn't go green on me. So if you do decide to put the yellow down first, just be careful you don't turn it all into strange green as you go. I'm going to add some really simple little mountains, basically just two V shapes and do it kind of long and skinny so it sort of feels like mountains. And then I'm wiping it off so it feels sort of out in the distance because it's going to be really soft. And then I'm going to use some of the blue and purple to just put a light wash of water on there and wipe it off again so that I get that sort of horizontal look, almost like there's reflection on the, the water down there. 
just to create a little bit at the bottom. The whole thing is about the sky and the majesty and the glory of God. Because when I see God rays, I can't help but think of him. I, I know that, that they call him God rays for a reason, but they really do call up his majesty because they're so beautiful, the way that the light fades through the different clouds. Now, since I held all that purple out, I added a lot of purple and made my clouds a whole lot beefier. Gave them a lot more color, but doing so, oh, that was my dog snoring. <laughs> if you heard that little noise, wow, he's really tired. Anyway, I um, ironing this just real quickly with a hot iron, put a piece of paper over it. Don't iron after you do this next step because this next step is going to be adding maybe some pigment to it. I'm using a white water-based Sharpie first just to see if that would work. And it gave me some kind of really strong lines, which kind of works for this starburst kind of an idea. And that's okay. But I wanted it to be a little more powerful. So I decided to get out a little bit of acrylic. I took just, it doesn't matter what kind of acrylic, just a little bit of acrylic, put some onto a plate. You can just get some on your finger if you want and then make the starburst with your finger. Now don't worry about going over the edge of the text there because you can actually adjust this after you get it put on as long as you keep working quickly. So don't let it dry. You want to work with it while it's still wet. But I'm gonna keep pulling out from that middle spot just to make kind of a giant starburst and then wipe it with the baby wipe. And look how thin you can get it in certain spots so you can make it lighter in some areas than it is in other areas. And that way you can keep the text readable. And you could make a cross in the sky out of it that way. There's all kinds of different ways that you can configure your clouds to do different things on different pages. I wanted to get my lettering done so that it was gonna end in the right place on my page. I don't know about you, but I run out of room all the time. So I wrote it on a scratch piece of paper so I can kind of follow along. And then I'm writing with my white gel pen and then the of needed to be in a color that would show up. So I used a blue micron pen. This is a beautiful way to do a page and create something where you just have that small sentiment on it, that small bit of text, but you have that image that has a lot of pow to it. So I hope you might try this on one of your pages. Be sure to share it with me if you do over on social. And I will see you again next week with another one of these from my 40 Days series. All right. Have a great week. God bless you.